We Tyler's. Keep it, we keeping that in? Tyler for the comic time. Tyler, Baron, where's the spice? Where's the comic book? Punisher number Punisher six. Punisher number six. All right, Chris, go to bed. Nighty night. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't forget to dance. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Mm. So you basically just kick each other's ass. <laughs> so Punisher, 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 num- Punisher number six uh, by Jason Aaron, Jesus Zayas, and Paul Azequita. Mm-hmm. Um. I read this, yeah, I read this yesterday before, so I want to have it as fresh possible uh, to talk about on the show. Um, this this series, like, is so it is is so consistent with who Frank is. Like I've said it probably every time we've talked about it, but it's still great to see this series deconstruct him, but also make you really feel sad for him. It it continue. I mean, like from the fact that we get the reveal that uh, his whole relationship with Maria was built on a lie. Mm. His best friend died, was murdered. Um, you know, the, like you just see these tragic things, and it continues in this this issue, especially. It's even more tragic, but oh. it's also, but it's also, is Frank having to learn to live with his live with it, in a way of being like. You are creating an abomination because you can't live with the you know this the guilt the guilt of this thing that well, created you what what you created the punishment what you're starting to sort of get the uh, the idea of in this issue and we're 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 on six now which um, if I'm not mistaken might should be the last book of King of Killers or whatever this should be book one of Daredevil six. oops spoilers. Okay, so it's basically two books. Uh, and this is book one, chapter six, and this is book yeah, two, yeah. chapter four. Anyway, um, but you're beginning to see that, you know, we talked about this in, in the issue, I believe, one or two issues ago, where he just mur- he just slices up the Hydra guy for no reason. And, and you start to understand that Frank Castle is a sociopath, and he's a psychopath, and he likes inflicting pain on others. And pain, there, yeah, he, there's a sick, twisted sense of justice inside of him, but none of it's real because he's still a murderer. He still kills for pleasure, almost. Well, yeah, well, that's what I mean, is he gets pleasure from pain. Yeah. Inflicting pain on others. Well, you're also starting to see that there's... Um, you're, you're starting to see Maria's side of things. Not quite this episode, or this issue episode. This issue, but next issue we start seeing like a lot of her perspective instead of the priestess or instead of Frank's or whatever. <clears throat> and I think this is really important. And here, here's what we got to I, I got to talk about something while we're talking about this because we're going to get into it. <sighs> it's going to make it political. No, I'm kidding. Sorry. Um, right now, there's a, a, a really shitty movie out uh, called Miller's Girl. <clears throat> And uh, Martin Freeman has been doing the rounds uh, defending this piece of shit where he's a 52-year-old uh, teacher who has a sexual relationship with his 21-year-old student. And he's he's defending this. Now, and... and, and, and um, we're we're starting to see a shift in, in, the, in the attitudes and, and how we view relationships between men and women in the past you 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 know till death did you part and stuff and for a long time in some states women could get divorced but we're starting to see that he was with her because he thought that's what he was supposed to do he she never really loved her she was yeah and she loved him yeah and and, and she reason, loved a lot the reason why i brought that, that movie up is was. because there's a lot of shitheads in this world who will try to justify this shit uh, because that's the way it's supposed to be, or whatever. Um, I just, I also just wanted to bring up the fact that shut the fuck up, Martin Freeman. There's no t- stop defending this movie. Sh- shut up. It's supposed to be a difficult topic. I don't care. It's, anyway, yeah, uh, yeah, not for me. But he kicks. Uh, Aries just kicks the shit out of him, like bad. Um, again, gross kind of. What I love about 
how, uh, like what I said before with Aries and stuff, with how I love what Jason and Aaron can do with mythology um, and understanding the mythology of it. And understand, like, yes, Aries was a good guy at some point because everybody is a good, it's, it, it, comic books are like pro wrestling. At some point, your favorite hero becomes a villain for a while, and then he becomes a hero again. You know, you know how it works. Um, but Ares, in the, even in Greek mythology, was always this. Oh, it was a dick, and he was a vindictive douche because he's, he's the, a hot headed. He's the god shit. of war. Yeah, he's he a wants dick. people to fight each other. Yeah, and so like that that whole theme of this storyline with him and Ares, and him saying like he is he is his best disciple and the fact that in this issue we get we go to the um uh the 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 whole um the the continued greek myth of like the usurping of the the son usurps the father because in this issue aries says you were like to son you were like a son to me mm-hmm. smashes his face in and says the uh, fall of the sun, fall of the sun, or something like that. Yeah. I can't remember what yeah. it was, but but the point is that like it even even then in that moment it plays to the to the to tradition of the Greek tragedy, the Greek myth of like we we know that it's the Punisher's book, and by him saying that we know Ares, who he views Frank as his son, is usurping him, which is like classic Greek tragedy. Right. I fucking love shit like that. Yeah. Like, look, you can have your gritty, and this is another reason what I love about this book. It's in continuity. So you can have your Garth Ennis fucking uh, Punisher Max gritty Frank Castle. He can exist. But I love that we're playing it. Like, we are really leaning into him being in the Marvel Universe and playing with these things and 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 it's 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 weird because it's like this whole thing has been like a status quo change for punisher and the hand and like and it's just it's just so it's fun to it's fun to jump into a book completely fresh at number one, even in the first issue, addresses like this is in continuity, but we're changing things. Like mm-hmm. this is going to be different, and like we discuss with Maria and things like that, and segment like it doesn't necessarily like he's not necessarily retconning anything. We just don't have that backstory because Aaron is really driving home the theme of that of like Maria was never supposed to be important to this story. She was always just a means to a an means end. to an end. And she is what creates she, she she is the origin story. Ask any fun uh, ask any fucking diehard Punisher uh, fan what were the names of his kids? I bet you they couldn't tell you. I yeah, but but and that's the thing and 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 it. It, and it playing with that, and by even going further into that and saying, like, maybe Frank and Maria weren't meant to be, you know, and we haven't got to the point from her perspective yet, but it's going to be, I'm, I'm interested to see it that. And we do start to see that first, like, I couple know, pages in this issue where she talks, she's one, she's gone to see him off, and, you know, he was already gone. Oh, yeah. So the flashbacks, mm. and that's what I love about this story is. It's just, again, filling in those blank spaces and doing something different with the character and, and challenging the character. Yeah, he's not retconning anything. He's just filling in the gaps even with, that have even never with, really been filled even, in before. And even with the hand, he's not retconning anything. In every Punisher book I read when I was a kid, they would show flashbacks. Like, you know, every other panel would be like, you know, his kids and then a hail of, you know, gunfire. You know what I mean? Like, they, they would show that. But they never ever ever delved into like who exactly i think i mean i think they did say exactly who was supposed to get murdered and and who you know the two crime families whatever but i mean it just really wasn't it, it was it was like the fucking radioactive spider like hey it it was i mean i hate to say it but um you know it was like Batman's parents getting shot. I mean, it's, and it's still, and it's, but this is, and and it, and it, and it's so. This is what's so fucking good about it, and yeah. what, when, when, like, when, like, same thing he did with Thor, man. When like Aaron is on, when Jason Aaron is on, man, yeah. it's fucking great. Like to inc- and but finding a way to 
reestablish a character, reiterate on a character, revolution, like continue to make changes, but also keeping all of that history, keeping all that in there, and then adding to it. Not necessarily retconning, but adding to it and saying like maybe when he killed the war wasn't the first time he really I killed would love someone. You to, know what I mean? Yeah, I would love to to hear from Jason Aaron like where where he started with this. You know, because I mean the idea that it, you you remember the Hulk series where he gets turned he turns himself into a spaceship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I love that fucking series. I I loved it. And the reason why is because they did something different with the character. You know what I mean? And this is the exact same yeah. thing. So yeah, uh, it, it does the classic comic book thing where like the last issue had a big action scene. Like how do you? And so yeah. the next book you have to be like, yeah, right? Flashback, and then you jump to the yeah. thing. You know. Uh, but but one of the things it, 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 they're not doing much different. But Jason Aaron asking a question that's never been asked before. How how would how would like was it? How could the hand get Frank to to work for them, or was it? Who could resurrect his wife, and why would they do it? You know what I mean. Like, which question did he ask first yeah. to himself to be like, "Holy shit!" And how did they? You know, like, what was the aha moment when you linked them together? You know, like, "Holy shit!" Um, and it's just, it's so the the fucking battle is is so good. The great so when he goes to fight Ares after we have the flashback, which is again he's all pissed because he's using the same weapons again, making it one hundred percent the Punisher, sticking with the character. It is equally badass and amazing action set pieces and like violent, gory, violent as fuck, fun fucking read, equally fucking heartbreaking because she's screaming at Frank because he's at a bar because he wasn't at the train to see him off back to back to his. Uh, his base, and mm. it's like he didn't feel. She said, "Like when we made, when they she they made love, she mm. held her eyes tight for the tears because he never touched her belly." And it is a weird feeling to read this series and read that, and then you know jump around a little bit to read it later, and to have him look at that picture and say he doesn't feel anything. Mm. Like, he kept staring at this picture and wondering why he couldn't feel anything. As a parent, that is so fucking sad. That is tragic beyond all. And again, is Aaron making a statement on the archetype of it? He didn't even care about that kid. Because none of it matters. Because he was always going to be the Punisher. Mm-hmm. Because he was always a killer. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, he fucking just he amazing. needed he needed he needed the catalyst. And, and to and have him just fucking put that stamp on it and just and again, it's the confidence with how he writes this and he's like, this is the definitive new Punisher story. Well, and it all started for a fucking logo. <laughs> let's, let's talk about like okay, Sorry, like I keep throwing the book. No, around. but I'm so excited about it. Oh, it's fine. But let's let's look at you know like the Batman mythos you know started way back in the 30s. Um, there was a lot of you know orphans in uh, media. You know little orphan Annie, and so Batman was well, no yeah, different. Disney, Disney, you no, always I'm, kill the parents. Well, this, you know, just, yeah, it's but, a common, but it's Disney, a common theme, yeah, yeah. But um, you know, so I mean, the tragedy of his parents getting killed. Well, he was rich anyway. Whatever. Uh, I mean, I, I get all that, but. In the seventies, when they did it again with the Punisher, I mean, what kind of a nutbag came up with the idea? Like, it's a it's a compelling idea that he's going to kill every, you know, every criminal he comes across because his own family was murdered. You know, mm-hmm. but but where do you draw the fucking line? Do you kill every pickpocket? Do you yeah. kill every, you know, uh, jaywalk? I mean, what are you talking about? You know. And, and and nobody really established that very well when they created this character. And obviously, like every other comic book character or any other IP, the writers who come after add and build upon that mythos. Mm-hmm. But nobody ever really stopped to think, why the fuck does he do all this? And Jason Aaron is the guy who came along and said, hey, let's fucking dig deep and find out. And the answer is because he's a fucking psycho. All right. Best one of my things, equally heartbreaking and badass. So then we get to the fight with him and uh, fucking Ares, mm. and he says the great. He's coming out of smoke, like 
he's hitting it with everything. He's hit him with a claymore. Yeah. Uh, everything he go, and he just comes out of this big explosion. And he goes, "The greatest machine of warfare ever born of man. Show me the true Punisher, or else die like a sniveling dog at the feet of your god." And he's wearing the fucking battle armor with the with the Punisher's logo yeah. on it. And it's like we go from that really tragic, sad shit to like this. And again, the image of fucking Ares in the fire, just standing there, and like. Hitting him with banner cannons. He's got the gravity ki- graviton bazooka that he could fucking throw cars at him, and yeah. it's just not working. And then we get that amazing shot where he's reaching for the gun yeah. to shoot Ares, and it's the mirror shot from the first issue of him reaching from real. Like it's just so fucking good, man. The art again just pops. The the it's just. What what dri- and then again what, the two artists for the flashback and every what fucking drives issue me works amazingly is that every like the present art the the art for the present so story detailed and vivid and is like, so like fucking Greek like you yeah. know fresco style like Sistine Chapel style like really good the epic feel like he's fighting the god yes. of war like it's and like, then and then the flashback art is is so good but in another way it's so good because it's it's a it's such a um a uh downplayed style you know uh the uh, the line work is a lot more feverish and a lot more uh you know uh desperate but it's just ah oh, it's so good yeah. it's so fucking good it Neither neither art style to me is better than the other. Um, they can't exist in this book without the other. Um, oh, the the flash they're just like, so the different. G- like Azekita's art for the flashbacks. There's so a good. couple books. Uh, there's a couple books uh, where a lot of it is Azekita because it's a mostly flashback. Um, number seven in particular, the next book, but. Uh, it's just it's awesome to see like an idea like that come together so well, and I love it. I just fucking love it when a book, you, comic book like this, utilizes the fact that it's a comic book, yeah, and tells the story a way that only this comic could be told. So the the panel on the left, as you le- re- left to right, where he's punching Frank and punishing him for his sins of helping the hand and being against his god. And it has flashbacks, and then um, when you you know when you were hiding from me, it shows all the flashbacks of the of the hand being in his backstory and his history. Mm, yeah. And then him saying, "No, that was not them. That was me. No matter what lies they mm. tell you, you are not their Messiah, Frank. You are mine, and I am war." Like just screaming it as he's punching him, and like ah. he's just beating the shit out of Frank. It's, it's amazing. It's kind of it's very visceral. He uh, he very he he. Beats the shit out of him. He likes it, and then he's like, he said, "No, no, it wasn't war, and it sure as hell wasn't you." Mm. But this is what I mean. Like this whole sequence, this whole fight, this whole conflict with Ares only happens because Ares says, "Fuck off, Punisher. He is the best one-man war machine I could have. He's my best disciple. He's mine." Mm. And like again. You don't see a lot of that in media and interpretations of mythology and these gods of like how obsessed the it, by nature a godly figure is with the idea of a messiah or a uh, a prophet to, well, or a disciple or that idea that like oh, yeah. I want him to Followers, worship the god yes. of war. I, well, I like they, they get off on it. Like, like gives them the power. Ares belief. You know what I mean? Ares. Uh, you know, he references it several times in the book, Bless the uh, war, in, in the like, series. Yeah. No, he, he references his time as an Avenger, as a good guy, uh, as an Avenger and a good guy. But he 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 also talks about like he he kind of is just like, fuck all that. I sh- I I don't know why I did any of that, because I've always been now I am who I've always been. I am fucking war. You know, like I am I am carnage. I am death. I, you know, I am. Whatever. The fact but he pun- he caved- it's so good that Aaron just made him like. Because I always thought that was fucking weird that Ares wasn't a. Why? Well, and the, the, well he was well, there even to. That, even that a couple issues ago, even the fact that he caved a man's skull in 
because he said peace. He in said front the of word him. peace. It's so corny and dumb and silly, but it works so well in this. Story. And I, 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 because it's so brutal. I, I've like was I've uh, I've watched like YouTube videos and I've like read some reviews about it, and like it is like this funny thing where like this story would be so compelling and interesting without the Punisher. You know, it, but it still works so well with him. Like Frank is still very important in part of this because Frank is kind of awesome in the sense of like, like how he is kind of whatever about it, where like he's a part of it and he has his moments where he's a, but it's just like he could fucking care less. Mm. Like he's still in it for his own gain. Well, like he's just in it to bring his family back. So Aries, <laughs> right? But but here's the thing: is he? Was he? Or is it? Yeah, is was he? he trying to avenge his family? That's what we're looking at here. Uh, so Ares kicks the shit out of him and tosses him away, and he has a flashback about being in Vietnam and talking about how he can't feel anything about his son. And then next thing he knows, he wakes up. He's alive. And he's alive back at the hand compound, and he has to go check out. Uh, we, the, we, the kids. We finally see what's gone wrong. And he sees them trying to be revived, and they're just like, It is fucking horrifying. These, like, gro- like, this really gross uh, uh, thing of, like, these two hands merged together. There's two... There's, yeah, Four a eyes. pair of eyes on one side, yeah. Like, there's things going on. But, like, this is what's so tragic and, again, heartbreaking about this book. Like, you were watching mm. this fucking epic fight he has with Ares and this cool shit, and then you get to the thing with, like, oh, he didn't feel anything for his kids... But, like, the fact that they're talking about the procedure, and she says, yes, I'm afraid that every time we've tried and failed to produce viable results, it's left less physical material to work with. Even the magic elixirs blessed by the beast have their limits, and with your wife requiring more injections after her sojourn Sojourn. Sojourn through the woods, but we always try again and trust in the will of the beast, perhaps after we've uh, defeated the god of war. It will... Oh, no. Before that, what did she say? I was looking up the right... Oh. Uh, she said it's harder to work to do the kids. It was easier to do Maria, but the reason it was harder because uh, it's harder to do something with this material, with this magic, when the kids have been dead longer than they've been alive. Right. And it's like, um, fucking hell, man. Well, <laughs> do you remember when we first read the when we read the first issue and I talked about the uh, EMTs reminding that, or I, I I said remember that, yeah, that the kids were cut to pieces. Yeah, there's hard. They're not a lot there. Right. Immediately that when they came there, the kids were gone. Yeah. I mean, they were gone. So then she's like, there's a, no chance. She, the priest only Maria and Frank were had a chance. Yeah. And the priestess comes in and says, she's like, yeah, they'll take care of it. They'll, you know, mercy kill the, these things and. He says, no, nobody touches my children. And you see him just, like, pop the sword. And it's fucking sad. And then he throws up. And then, up oh, Daredevil shows up. And he's like, what the hell are we doing here, Yeah, Frank? but um, I-, I, want you to, I want you to fucking remember this for later issues. Do you think it, it, it's, it's very clear from their conversation that this is not the first time that they have tried to revive his kids? Yeah. Consequently, this is not the first time that he's had to murder his own kids. Yeah. Think about that for later issues, because it's going to get brutal. Yeah. That's when, that's, it, the idea is that we're deconstructing this because <laughs> violence isn't the answer, and it never has been, and, and, and. Fucking people in this world this, need to stop thinking about and all, that. And Frank, and this is a great way to de. This is a great way to take what a lot of assholes has, have pointed to as justifiable violence, vigilant. Yeah. This is a great way to tear all that mythos down and say, no, you're the fucking villain. You're the fucking villain, and you've always been the villain, Frank. You're the villain because you're a all, killer. All of this is because you're a killer. You're, you're just who. Yeah, you've always been this way. And I'm really excited to get more into it because this it, basically we finished the first book. Yeah. Um, so that was issue six, and we're coming on to issue seven, and also, then there's, there's also, another six. Also, props to Aaron to not have Frank kill Ares in the sixth issue. 
Because I was thinking 12 issues. I'm like, oh, so we'll end the Ares arc, and then we'll have another arc. And it's like, oh, okay, he didn't kill him in issue six. All right. I have been really, really good at reading just the issues before we come over with the Punisher. You remember yeah, I, was, yeah. I was skipping ahead with Defenders, um, <clears throat> with the Defenders book. But I, um, I couldn't remember... Uh, it was issue three or four where I was speculating that, you know, the first six are his battle with Ares and then the, the last six are his dealings with the rest of the Marvel Universe. Um, I still maintain that, although um, let's just let me re, let me kind of adjust to say that Ares may very well be in the entire 12 issue run or at least the first 10 because obviously you can tell from the end of this issue he's they're They're not done. They're yeah. not done. Yeah, yeah. There's more to come between the Punisher and Ares. And how does that end? We don't know. We'll but the, find out but together. The cover of the, but the cover of the next issue. Oh, yeah. With the come on. That's fucking cool. Punisher and Daredevil hanging by hooks of the of the beast. Hooks of the beast. Hooks of the beast. Well, this is uh, tying into uh, Chip Zdarsky's uh, Daredevil run at the time. Yes. Yes. So. Yeah. Which is interesting. Um that they kind of tie in or whatever. Again, I wasn't I wasn't reading any of that shit. Not, heard, not nothing, that I've heard nothing but good things about. No, me neither. Uh, um, uh, but I just I couldn't I couldn't read more than a couple books at the same, at the same time. Oh yeah, I want to read. I want to go back and read Chip uh, Chip's run on Daredevil for sure. But put it away, know, man. Don't touch it. I'm looking it. at uh, issue number seven right now. So my hands. I don't know why I'm going Elvis. Yeah, because you know what, Punisher? Hey. Hey, hey man. He might hey, be man, Frank listen, Castle, he might be the Frank but, Castle uh, but I might um, be the Castle of the Frank. Elvis Castle. Calvis, Calvis of the asshole. Calvis, Calvis of the of asshole. The asshole? <laughs> That's a... Calvis of the, the asshole. asshole. Coming down to you piece of shit. What? Oh, Bill Lofjobby. With Jake and Tyler. Tyler.